Hello, hello, and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible study video channel. Today's uh, Bible study will be a continuation of the book of Revelation that we started in the, the month of January for this year, 2024. And we're going to go ahead and go forward with uh, chapter 19. Today is January the 19th, 2024. And that's where we are. Okay, so here we see John is having and explaining the vision that he's had. And uh, he goes into it, into this chapter also. He says, after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. And this is what the great voice of all the people that he heard in heaven was saying. They were praising God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Hallelujah. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hands. Hallelujah. So here we see there's a celebration. There's a worship and praising that he's seen that's taking place in the heavens, okay? And that the praise of, and the glory, hallelujah, uh, because the Heavenly Father has gotten the victory over the great whore. Now, remember in the previous chapters, that great whore is that great whatever uh, system that God may be getting ready to get the victory over because there are unfortunately many whores. But as we look in the chapter uh, that we're reading we know that he's talking about in, in reference to the Old Testament, the great whore Babylon. But it's also in reference to today in the revelation of what goes forward in the earth as far as the revelation of the Heavenly Father getting victory over those systems that try to dominate over his kingdom, okay? Or that come up in opposition against his kingdom, okay? That is that same great whore in comparison, okay? So... They, so what John is seeing in the vision is a praise and worship over that set over the, the enemy, basically the enemy's camp, the enemy's kingdom. OK, so and again, they say it. Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God, all ye his servants and you that fear him, both small and great. So there was a praise and a worship because of the victory over the enemy for the saints of God, okay, in the earth. So he said, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns, okay? So he's hearing the praise and the worship of the many saints for the victory over the enemy and all that he has done against the saints of God in the kingdom. And he goes on, verse 7, he says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Okay? So this, we know who the wife is, the church. Okay? Ready for the Lamb, the marriage of the Lamb, Jesus Christ marrying uh, the church, the saint, becoming one and becoming a part of the kingdom of God. That marriage he is talking about of the lamb. And he says, and to her was granted that she could be arrayed in fine linen. Speaking in terms of the church. Okay. So that would include all saints of God because they are the church. They are the bride to God. That he is married. He is our Ishai, our husband. Okay. So he says here, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he says to me, right, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. So blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. All right, called into the kingdom of God, the marriage supper of salvation, because we eat the bread. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is that supper that we eat, that mighty powerful bread. Okay. And he says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, see that you do not try to worship me, for I'm thy fellow servant. I'm just as you are. Don't worship me. And he wanted to make sure 
but he made that clear because people can begin to want to worship man and it's not man that's operating it's god operating through man and uh he said and of that of thy brothers that have the testimony of jesus so worship god he says for the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy okay for the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy the spirit of prophecy operating through an individual is is a uh, witness it testifies to the fact that that person is a part of the kingdom of god they've been birthed into the kingdom of god they are celestial they are part of the heavenlies they have gone through the door of christ jesus hallelujah <laughs> all right and verse 11 says and i saw heaven open he's going to see talking about another vision and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. So here he's seeing Christ Jesus, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, okay? Many, many crowns, because there are many crowns that we receive in the kingdom of God, as a part of his kingdom. And he had the name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god and the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses clothed in fine white and uh clean linen so he's talking about all the angels hosts of the heavens follow him and came also and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Christ Jesus, and Lord of Lords. Okay, so he's seeing Christ Jesus coming into the earth, he said, in this other vision. Okay, and of course, as I've uh, taught on this particular chapter before it illustrates and brings into uh, fruition the salvation the plan of salvation and how it came into the earth and so john has it's being allowed to see that vision okay and, and, and he's seeing it again from a, a vision point of view okay because we are experiencing it now it's going forward it's already happened but he's getting the vision of it from uh a vision point of view not from an actual it happening but he's seeing it in a vision happening so verse 17 says and i saw an angel standing in the sun this is another vision and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great god okay now those fowls we're going to read about he's talking about are saints okay and that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free both in bond both small and great okay so now these two verses we can refer over to jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 9 is where the holy spirit led me in reference to this because when i asked the holy spirit you know what god was referring to as the fowls and we know those you know are birds but however he also refers to the kingdom at some points as birds and so we can see that in jeremiah chapter 12 and uh, verse 9 where he says this uh my heritage is unto me as a speckled bird okay and the birds around about are against her. Come ye and assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. Okay. To, to devour. Uh, to bring forth into the kingdom of God. Okay. To take over. To uh, manifest my spirit over their spirit. Okay. Now he doesn't. Because he's not talking about literally devour. You know to devour. But that in terms of taking over with my spirit is what he's referring to same way with this eat of their flesh because these are those that are uh the kings of the earth as you see here he says 
that ye may eat the flesh of the kings and the flesh of the captains and the flesh of the mighty men and those of those of the earth, not of the saints, because the saints have already eaten. They've already submitted to God and they're eating the bread of life. They're eating at the supper. OK, but those that are walking still in the flesh of the earthly that have not been birthed into the kingdom, born again of the spirit, they are of the flesh. So therefore, he is saying that the saints of God will eat up their flesh, devour their flesh with the Holy Spirit. OK, overpower them and come uh, be able to convince them to come into the kingdom of God. OK, basically come into the Holy Spirit. To, Okay, so then verse 19, he says, And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Now, we know that in verse 19, this happens continually, okay? Where the enemy in the kingdom of darkness against is against God and the kingdom of light, okay? And that's basically what this is saying. And at this particular point in time, John is seeing this. And he says, and the beast was taken and with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. And these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. OK, and we see that he says with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. OK, so. The mark of the beast, the enemy, satanic, demonic forces can do sorts of miracles also. But how you can tell the difference and be able to discern is the Holy Spirit, okay? And the Holy Spirit, you will be able to discern the Holy Spirit's miracles from satanic miracles through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit because the Heavenly Father gives you discernment of spirits in the Holy Spirit. All right. So then he says here that. Where are we at? Verse mm, 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. OK, so therefore, you know, God won victory over them, basically. And that's going forward today where God is winning victory over those that walk in the flesh and that are still of the earth vessel but and he is taking over because as he stated throughout his word all nations will become one nation under him okay and it's all about him and how he does what he wants to do through salvation in the earth and that is i think going to be the conclusion no, let me take a take this over into the book of uh, Luke. I'm going to go over into the book of Luke as we elaborate on this verse 9. Verse 9 of uh, 19, chapter 19, in the marriage supper. Let's go to Luke in the Gospels. Luke chapter 14, where Jesus Christ speaks of the parable of the supper. Uh, Luke chapter 14, he starts with verse 15. When one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and he invited many people to the supper. Now this is the parable parable that Jesus Christ began to speak of in terms of the supper, the supper that is mentioned in verse 9 of the previous chapter revelation we just read about, and the invitations that were given out to individuals to come, because that's what chapter 19 is basically uh, giving us reference to also, and how many are being invited into the kingdom okay and coming in to the kingdom all right and that's basically what this uh, scripture talks about too here in Luke chapter 14 starting with uh, 15 as he begins to tell the parable of the supper 
and how those that were invited to the supper, he says, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were invited, come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make an excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it for I pray thee have me excused. Okay. And as he tells this particular parable, he's speaking in terms of those that God has already chosen to be a part of his kingdom, but they're making excuses. Okay. And uh, not coming forward, coming into the kingdom. So therefore, since they're making excuses and not wanting to come into the kingdom, then uh, God is saying those that have not originally been invited into the kingdom, go out and, and extend an invitation to them. And so with the extension of the intent, the invitation, as we look at in chapter 19, because they were originally a part of the devil's kingdom. OK, that, ex that invitation is being extended to them and they end up coming into the kingdom. And that's why he says here. In verse 21, the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which is Christ, which sword proceeds out of his mouth, the word of God, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. The fowls he referred to as the kingdom of God, those birds, as we saw Jeremiah chapter 12 and 19, filled with their flesh because they have been, they have come into the kingdom of God and been sanctified, giving themselves over to the Holy Spirit, okay? And the plan of salvation uh, as going forward. So that I think is the end of that particular Revelation chapter 19 Bible study. And as we take a look, we took a look at John receiving the vision of salvation, the plan of God as how it's going forward in the earth today, and then how it actually was shown to him in a vision in heaven. It's like the heaven, a heavenly point of view vision but it's also an earthly revelation of what's going and taking place in the earth today all right all right so god bless you i'll see you as on our next video as we continue to go forward with the feed my sheep foundation bible study video channel